It's 90 minutes from Miami. It was shocking to see the suffering of such magnitude so close to America. As a nurse, I worked in nursing homes for about 20 years, and I was certainly used to smells of uh, human excrement and necrotic tissue, things like that. But when I saw all the refuge in the streets mixed with water, and people walking through it. I couldn't believe that people would be living like that. Like, I was afraid to walk in it. I didn't want it to get into my, you know, shoes. I was afraid of any disease that was there, and I thought people were living in this, washing in it. There's no plumbing in there. There's no uh, cabinets for, you know, your utensils. Uh, most of the houses we saw didn't even have a table and chair. They might have a mattress on the floor. When I walked through the slums and saw literally hundreds of children malnourished and sick without enough food or water, it, it broke my heart. When I imagine how a, a Haitian father must feel when he sees his children sick, dying, starving in the dirt in the slums of Haiti, and he has nothing to give them. So this was almost being in a, a surreal type uh, situation, or almost a dream that was an unpleasant dream. And you had to wake up from that dream and pinch yourself and say, this isn't happening. But the uh, truth is that it is happening. I was just overwhelmed. I had never seen anything like that in my life. Uh, I wouldn't even allow a dog to live like those people live. I saw a young mother shaking a child to make it seem like it was alive. They were sitting in a clinic where the doctor had no antibiotics, no medicine, and uh, the young mother was just sitting there shaking the baby, hoping that it would come back to life. In the third world, in the slums, they have nothing. It's very sad. The people you have just heard are donors to the Food for the Poor ministry. They traveled on pilgrimage to see firsthand how their third world brothers and sisters live. The trip was led by Ferdinand Mafoud, founder of Food for the Poor. Love is the greatest spiritual gift that we can have. And love of disenfranchised people, love of the poor, is a great calling, which is really to serve Christ in the poor. Join these pilgrims now and discover how Food for the Poor strives to fulfill Jesus' command to love one another. Well, the worst part is the house condition. The worst part is the house condition for a living in water night and day. I turn my face to where the sun is coming from and I lift me and up to God and start to cry. Touch someone hard to come and help me. But several times I do it, several times, several times. I'm not going to my bed. I took out the bedside and I start to cry. <laughs> this is a condition. <laughs> and the littlest one said to me, the littlest one that is Richie, and said, Mommy, Mommy, we want to come out of this house and go into a pretty house. That's what he said to me. And I said, One day, one day, Father God will take you out. And that is what every human being in the world desires, is to live a decent life where we can bring up our children with food and educate them, and we can live decently and not live like rats in a dungeon. In the slums of Haiti, one in two children die in the first year of life, and the average lifespan is 40 years old. 
No people should live like this. It touched my heart because um, there was a boy about my son's age, and I remember him digging through the garbage, and, and I thought, by the grace of God, this could have been my child digging through this garbage. I expect a lot out of life. Uh, and I get annoyed if it doesn't come my way. And I have to say I was humbled by those people that have not, and just that they could draw a breath the next day or have some food and water uh, was, you know, something great for them. Um, it was a very humbling experience in that respect. I was um, struck with a great sadness, or maybe compassion is the word, that I, I looked and I saw how these people were living, and they're, they're human beings like myself. It's hard to understand that when we live in America and we have so much. We wake up in the morning, we have water, we open our refrigerator, we have food. If we get ill, we have medicine. When I arrived home, my children, who are adults, uh, three of them were still living at my home. Well, at that time, they were in high school and college and so on. And they asked me about my trip. And I tried to tell them, but I kept weeping. And uh, finally, uh, I was able to get it out. But it was just so overwhelming that uh, it made an impression on me that really has lasted until today. One family going to bed at night, the father says to the wife, OK, we haven't had anything to eat for the day, and we have five children. They are ready to go to bed. Why don't you melt some salt in some water? We'll, every, each one of us will have a sip when we go to bed. Nearly 50% of the six and one half million Haitians suffer from malnutrition. The poor in Guatemala, as well as in most third world countries, scavenge in garbage dumps for food and items to sell. Jesus said, when you serve the poor, you serve me. When you visit the poor, you visit me. When you see a naked person and you put clothes on them, you put clothes on me. When you feed a poor person, you feed me. Moved by the plight of the poor, in 1982, Ferdinand Mafoud founded Food for the Poor, an interdenominational Christian ministry that serves the poor throughout the Caribbean and Latin America. Its mission is to distribute food and supplies through local charities and churches to the poorest of the poor. Ferdinand grew up in Jamaica, where he worked in his family's import-export business. After a dramatic spiritual conversion, God called Ferdy to use his business expertise for the poor. What do you need food for the poor to do for you? We need tools, auto, auto mechanic tools, auto mechanic tools, a set of tools, and an instructor. I've come here today to, with a group to find out what do you need and to find out your new requests. There are not a lot of organizations doing exactly what we do, which is to go to the priest, to go to the nun, to go to the pastor, and say to the pastor, Pastor Brown, what do you need? And give them exactly what they need. From its headquarters in Florida, Food for the Poor works quickly to respond to these requests. Ferdy and his staff buy the needed goods on the world market at the lowest possible cost, then ship them duty-free, maximizing the impact of each donated dollar. Since its inception, Food for the Poor has distributed over $300 million in food and supplies to the Caribbean region, including Haiti, Jamaica, Dominica, St. Lucia, Grenada, Trinidad, and Guyana and has expanded its outreach to Latin America. I never pray in church that God would help the poor. I pray that God would give me the strength to help the poor. Because if we look at the Gospels, and we look when the disciples said to Jesus, the people are hungry, give them something to eat. Jesus turned around to them and said, why don't you give them something to eat? So the, the, the responsibility is not on God to feed the people. God has given us the responsibility to feed the people. In America, there is unemployment insurance, social security, and other government agencies to take care of the poor. 
in Haiti and the other Caribbean countries that we help in Latin America, we're not talking about poverty, we're talking about destitution. There is a great difference between destitution and poverty. Each one of these people that come to our feeding programs, they get enough food and they take it home and they feed six or seven other people. We feed about 10 to 12,000 people every day. If it wasn't for our benefactors, we couldn't keep it going. At first, when you see the number, the sheer number of the people suffering, it's shocking and you say to yourself, what can I do? There's too much, too many people. And then you realize that one person can do a lot. Just to see one person fed, one child schooled, one person housed, would be enough for me in my lifetime. In rural areas throughout the third world, poverty is intensified because of the lack of water. For example, in Latin American countries like Nicaragua, only 15% of the rural population has access to safe drinking water. Without water to irrigate crops, farmers cannot produce enough food, and people often go hungry. In remote Haitian villages like Coupon, food for the poor is meeting this critical need by digging wells and installing water pumps. We were asked by the villagers, some 35,000 people, to bring water in for them. It'll change their life because they'll have water for agriculture, and they'll have water to cook with, they'll have water for domestic purposes. In helping countries like Haiti, Food for the Poor is linking the Church of the First World to the Church of the Third World to fulfill Jesus' command to love one another. You know, I, I often think um, about neighbors. You know, what do we call a neighbor? Sometimes we focus that a neighbor is the guy who lives next door. Well, if, if the guy next door suddenly couldn't feed his children and you slowly watched his children starving to death and your cupboards were full of food and your bank account was full of money, I don't believe that you would stand by and allow that guy's little girl to just slowly starve to death. But that's what we're doing. We're doing that because Haiti is our neighbor. Conditions are deplorable. They have two, sometimes three mothers in a bed with their babies after delivery. Their hospitals are not clean or sanitary. And it's amazing that the patients survive. Many patients don't survive. One in two babies die in the first year of life. Sometimes it's because mothers deliver in unsanitary conditions. Sometimes it's because the parents can't afford a few dollars for medicine. These mothers battle AIDS, malaria, tuberculosis, and hepatitis, but this Haitian hospital lacks the facilities and personnel to help them. There is only one doctor per thousand patients. In the third world, millions of the poor are barred from basic health care. But throughout the Caribbean and Latin America, food for the poor is opening the way to better health care. This hospital in Haiti was begun by Food for the Poor with help from its family of donors. Thank you very much because if it wasn't for you, or anesthesia machines or tables, I, we don't know how we will do without you. One benefactor, Dr. Keith Hussey, has become a regular visitor to Haiti since his pilgrimage. He helped to launch this hospital by donating medical equipment and offering his medical skills to Food for the Poor. And a year later, when I went back, there was a wonderful change. They were helping people. It was a hospital with beds and nurses and doctors and equipment, and they were saving lives. That hospital is in an area known as Kafu, where there's 350,000 people. Without the Food for the Poor Hospital, those people would have no health care at all. Throughout the third world, health care for the elderly is grossly inadequate. 
Because there is no social security, the elderly without means often end up on the street. If it weren't for the St. Vincent de Paul Society Ozenam Home in Kingston, Ruby Smith, a conscientious office clerk for 40 years, would be homeless during the last years of her life. It's just one life, you know, not two, it's one. So we have to appreciate it and take care of it and thank God for it, too, you know? I really make myself active every day. You know? Oh, good, you have to, you know. Because I work At St. Vincent de Paul, residents like Ruby are well taken care of. Um, they're well supported. Um, they're taken care of by a, a very committed staff. Prior to Food for the Poor um, expanding its services here, however, medical care was, was, was really lacking. And now we're able to, to adequately address the medical needs of, of persons like Ruby. Health extends beyond the physical to the mental and spiritual. But too often the mentally ill are treated as outcasts, tossed out of society like human refuse. They were found in different parts of the city or the countryside. Some of them in barrels, some of them on the steps of hospitals, some of them actually thrown out at our gate. Father Gregory Ramkasun has rescued scores of children from these unspeakable conditions and brought them to Mustard Seed and New Jerusalem, homes for disabled children supported by Food for the Poor. Here, Father Ramkasun is building a refuge for the rejected. I tell you, our Lord told us, you know, he said, look, the stone that was, was rejected is the cornerstone. I know he's speaking about all the stones that were ever rejected. And my personal belief is that the church, not even the church, humanity, mankind, must go after the rejected stones, for therein lies the answer of self-knowledge and closeness to God. In the mornings, I do exercise with her. Come, Nikki. Come now, go on. I love them, and I care for them, because I love my own as well. So I do unto to her as I do unto my own. Nice girl. Hold. <laughs> nice. Up again. Every time we come here, there are more children. Can you imagine what a beautiful smile Keisha has, eh? You may not see a great physical change in the short run, but there is certainly a psychological change, not only in them, I should tell you, but in the people that serve them, all of us. And that's where I think the conversion comes in. They are being used by the Lord to convert us, and we are being used by the Lord to help them. Nice girl. Nice girl. Many third world children don't attend school, and most poor adults are illiterate. This inability to read and write locks whole families into an endless cycle of poverty. Food for the Poor knows that education is the force that can break that cycle. I'll never forget the first time I came here. It was so disheartening to be in the slum areas in the morning. And when we walked into this school and saw the colors and the flowers and the children so beautifully cared for, it was like going into an oasis. It's such a sign of hope. Food for the Poor funds the Najo Primary School here in Port-au-Prince by providing the teaching staff, the lunch program, and school supplies. These children are, are coming out of very poor circumstances, and look at them. They're clean and healthy and happy, and they're being educated in a lovely Christian atmosphere. At Najo School, these children do have a lovely atmosphere. But after school, they return home to squalor. If these children are going to escape the slums, they'll need to continue their education, education that can only be provided with help from the first world. Of course, the need for education extends beyond children to young adults. To earn a living, men and women must acquire marketable skills, so Food for the Poor supports a variety of training programs operated by caring Christians like this one. 
called Operation Friendship. She's on her hammer. The society in which we live is one which very often tend to look out for the brightest and the best, and the poor ones are forgotten. What we ought to do is to give them the tools and the opportunity. Operation Friendship, it gives me a lot of opportunity, it gives me more hope for myself, because I'm more confident to know that when I, when, when I leave here, I will have a better future in life. Here at Lakai School for Boys in Port-au-Prince, Father Attilio Straw sees a future for homeless boys. We must learn them to be a real man with the moral values, religious values, civic values, and also economic values. And so they have, must learn to do something. It's what we are trying to do, to give them a real formation to be a man, a real man. The high unemployment rate in the third world is frequently caused by collapsed economies. For that reason, food for the poor helps individuals start their own businesses. Brian Balmer, a Notre Dame graduate in business, volunteers with Food for the Poor. We want projects to be successful. There's no reason to start projects if they're not going to be successful or not going to produce benefits long term. So we try and set up our projects to challenge the people, to address it from a long term approach, that it's not going to happen quickly. We didn't start this project with enough chickens to provide income for everyone on the project, but we've given them a start. If they can improve upon it, then they will, they will earn more and the benefits, it will benefit them. So people that, that donate their money to start projects like this, I think they're gonna see a return for their dollar. Because of an acute housing shortage in the Caribbean and Latin America, providing basic housing is a priority for food for the poor. Today, Velma Brown's prayers are being answered. Food for the Poor is building a new house for Velma, where her old one stood. One of literally thousands built by Food for the Poor. Pretty house you get. Yeah, man, lovely. Eh? Lovely. All right. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for Velma and her three lovely boys today. Jesus, we ask you to bless this house and bless her and her family and bless the poor of this world who are waiting on a house like this. And we ask you to open the hearts of our benefactors, our donors, and the future donors of food for the poor. <laughs> so that other people will be blessed like this, like well, my husband blessed by you. Hope is an integral part of the Christian faith. Uh, so we begin on the assumption that all is not lost. And when you have partners like Food for the Poor coming in, lending a hand, assisting us in pointing the way forward, then the sky really is the limit. I don't think giving is a matter of generosity, but a matter of justice. If uh, I have time, talent, or money at my disposal, I have to do with that what God wants me to do with it. I haven't bought rice since Food for the Poor started. I haven't bought beans since food, and that is 15, 20 years ago. I don't know how long. I haven't had to buy one pound of rice. Now, if food support didn't help in anything else, that speaks volumes. To be able to help the poorest of the poor is a blessing. Food for the poor has been life to the village of Hope, to the children of this area who were destitute, hungry, and without hope. 
it's uh, also non-sectarian because uh, when some people come to uh, food for the poor, to the center, hospital, schools, or any other place, you don't first ask them, uh, where do you go to church or do you go to church? You have some need and we're going to try to meet your needs and give you some help. I had to come back and think about, you know, where is my place, what do I have to do, and uh, what's important to me? I concluded that I can't change the world, uh, but I have to do my little part. We've received sewing machines, we've received from them food, we have a feeding program here, and we receive regularly every month food to feed the children breakfast as well as lunch because many of them have no food or little food and come to school hungry. I don't know if it was God, if it was my conscience, if it was what, but love thy neighbor as thyself kept going over and over in my mind. And then Jesus gives the punchline that must come with every sermon, go and do likewise. And I see Food for the Poor doing that with uh, the kind of urgency that Jesus talked about when he said the harvest is, is ripe, but we need workers to get there. And Food for the Poor is responding now. Sharing your bread with the hungry, sheltering the oppressed and the homeless, clothing the naked when you see them, and not turning your back on your own. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your wound shall quickly be healed. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you bestow your bread on the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, then the light shall rise for you in the darkness, and the gloom shall become for you like midday. I come out of the darkness, and I'm in the light now. Thank to Jesus. Who could it be but God? We've seen the poor in the Caribbean Basin. I've heard their cry in my visits there. And now we can do something about it. Food for the Poor, an organization made up of people of faith in Jesus who see and serve Jesus in those poor, offers us an opportunity to make a response. Won't you join me in doing so? Your response is important. Every contribution, large or small, will make a real difference in the lives of the poor. With a gift of $25, you can sustain a family of six with beans and rice for a year. Your love gives them life. With a gift of $50, you can provide life-saving medical treatment to a vulnerable mother and child. Your love shows them mercy. A gift of $150 can purchase a water pump, supplying urgently needed water to an entire village. Your love renews their world. $500 can provide a teacher and supplies for a classroom of children, bringing light into their darkness with the gift of an education. Your love gives them hope. And with a gift of $1,500, you can build a home like Velma Brown's for another family in desperate need of shelter. Through love, all things are possible. When you realize you can save a life and help a family, you feel joy. We love because he first loved us. And when we feel loved by God, uh, that kind of overflows. Not only does God hear the cry of the poor, but through us, God works to answer the cry of the poor. The money that we donate really does get there, that we've been there, we've seen for ourselves. I don't know what a life is worth to you. I don't know what a child is worth to you. I know that if someone said to me that I could make the difference between life and death, between a child living or dying, and, and, I, and when I asked them what would it take, and they told me it was so little and it was something that was well within my means. How could I say no? How can you say no? The needs are urgent. Won't you take a moment to respond now? 
To make a tax-deductible contribution, simply use the special brochure included with this video. Tear off the attached envelope and mail it today. Please give generously, sacrificially, to this important work. Join us as we strive to fulfill Jesus' command to love one another. For more information, or to send your tax-deductible contribution by letter or phone, contact us at Food for the Poor, Department 12900, 550 Southwest 12th Avenue, Deerfield Beach, Florida, 33442. Or call 1-800-282-7667. That's 1-800-282-7667. Our address on the World Wide Web is www.foodforthepoor.com. God bless you.